Hi, it's Kava. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. I hope the new year is treating you well. I hope the weather is lovely by you like we've had for the last week and not like we have today. On the plus side, an opportunity to wear my new sweater. So I guess there's a little bit of good in everything. Um, this last week has been full of ups and downs for me. It was the third anniversary of my mother's passing away um, and a big celebration and happy birthday party for some friends of mine. And it's just been emotional all over the place. So I hope that things calm down a bit from now on um, and that we can need to have lots of happy parties with a lot less stress about COVID and worrying if we invite people, will we be causing all of our friends and family to become infected or trying to do the math of like, if I avoid people enough that I become depressed, will that repress my immune system more than, <laughs> oh, there is so much stress in the world these days. So <clears throat> really, really hope that this whole fifth wave or whatever they're calling it is over soon. And we get back to at least, at least to our new normal. Um, and in the meantime, I'm continuing with my new normal here by answering your questions. Thank you for everyone who sent questions in. Um, I have lists of everything you've asked me, and I will hopefully be getting around to answer, answering all of them. Uh, I'm not necessarily doing them in the order that I get them exactly. I'm trying to more or less work through from oldest to newest, but sometimes I'm asked a question that goes really well with another question I've already been asked. And so I'm going to try and answer them close together so that um, you can get a little more perspective on an issue. So uh, today I have a question about roosters. Um, that is people who are born in the year of the rooster or whose branch energy, the way they interact with the world and with the people around them, the way they conduct relationships with people and things is represented by the animal, the rooster. Um, and so I actually have two questions. I have one about how to help two roosters get along better and one on how to help a rooster and a tiger get along better. So we're gonna start with the two roosters. If there's time, I'll move on to the second question. And if not, then you'll get that in the next video. Um, but for the moment I have been asked and I have the exact question right here. One second. Okay, how can you get two roosters to avoid pecking each other's eyes out over simple miscommunications? Asking for a friend. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to uh, believe my friend that she's asking for a friend of hers and not for herself, even though she's a rooster and her husband is a rooster. Um, so just answering in general terms, uh, a little bit about roosters, just so we'll understand more about where people are coming from and how they're going to react to things. So when we say that someone's personality or a certain aspect of someone's personality is represented by an animal like a rooster or a tiger or an ox or a rabbit, what I mean is that the way that they perceive, um, perceive the world around them uh, causes them to react in certain ways that reminded ancient Chinese philosophers of specific animals. Um, and because there are a lot of animals to choose from in the world, there's thousands and thousands of different kinds of animals people interact with on a daily basis. And not just animals, there's also weather patterns and organs of the body and types of farming tools. There are all sorts of things that Chinese philosophers have um, used as metaphors to describe human behavior. And out of the thousands of options that they had, they chose 12 very specific animals to describe people's relationships. And so these are very, very accurate descriptions, not necessarily because we're saying, oh, someone who's born in the year of the rooster has this special spiritual roosterness, but because out of all of the, the thousands of ways that such a person could be described, the rooster was found to be the most suitable description. And so usually we can kind of look at the behavior of the animal and use that to get information about how a person with this, with this energy will react to things, um, not because there's a great spiritual rooster in the sky that's sharing its, its personality with people, but just because people spent so much time and effort, lifetimes of studying, trying to find the right description, and they didn't rest until they found one that matched 
bull, it hit the bullseye. Um, so a little bit about the rooster. Um, first of all, it's specifically a rooster and not a chicken. Um, and so I actually grew up on a farm and we had roosters, we had chickens. And so I'm gonna describe like what the behavior is that you see in a, in a small uh, family farm, which is probably more or less what the ancient Chinese were looking at. They weren't looking at a huge battery farm and they weren't looking at wild birds. They were looking at small flocks um, in, in a sort of semi-domesticated state. Um, and so that's probably pretty accurate uh, equivalent to the behavior that the people who chose this metaphor were seeing. So what the rooster represents is it represents um, this, this great protectiveness and willingness to put others first within the family and within the community. So the first thing people see when they look at a rooster is usually um, something aesthetic. They see the externals. They see, oh, he's got such pretty feathers and he's got like a big thing and he's all fluffy. And like he's showing off, he's making himself visible as opposed to the hens and the chicks. We're all kind of like tiny and brown and blend into the underbrush. And so people who aren't familiar with the animal's behavior can look at the rooster and they can think, He's, he's arrogant or he's showing off. He wants everyone to see him. And the thing is that he does want everyone to see him because the rooster's job when something attacks, when a hawk attacks when a, or a cat or a dog, is he is there to make sure that he is the one that they go for. He's the one the predator go for, goes for and he's going to fight them off or he's going to get eaten while the hen and the chicks make their escape. Um, the rooster is always the one who goes out first in the morning and he looks around and he goes to the food first, not because he wants to eat first and not because he wants to oppress the, the weaker hens and the chicks, but because he needs to make sure that it's safe. Maybe something is lying in wait, waiting to attack. So he's always going out in front. He's always making himself, he's always putting himself in a vulnerable position um, in order to protect others. And he's willing to sacrifice himself for his family, for his flock. This is his job. This is his role in, in chicken society. And this is how he makes sure that his offspring have the best chance of surviving and passing on their genes. And so when we talk about rooster people, we're usually talking about people who care about appearances, who care about aesthetic, who care about the external things, who care about how others perceive them, but not because they're shallow but rather because they know that if they wanna get something done in the world, if they wanna achieve a goal, if they wanna represent their family, if they want to represent their uh, company or make sure that other people are willing to work with them in order to achieve their goals, it matters. They, you know, they care about the externals because they care so deeply about achieving their goals, about representing their family well, about making sure that when people see them, they see this kind of external representation of their, their value, their deepest value, which is really of, about caring for others, protecting others, and being willing to put themselves out for the good of their family. Okay, so having said all that, what happens when we have two roosters who keep pecking at each other? And I lied, I am assuming that my friend is asking this question about herself and her husband. So I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of information that I know about them. One of which is that they got married during COVID and they're now trying to like live together in an apartment um, and trying to get along like we all are. <laughs> and I think most of us has reached the point where we've considered pecking someone else's eyes out during a lockdown. Um, and different people have different ways of coping and different ways of dealing with the stress that is brought about by external circumstances. So one thing that we have to know about the rooster, um, and in both cases, uh, when we talk about the rooster, we're describing men and women who are born um, during the year of the rooster, just be very, very sure that's clear. It's not like the men are roosters and the women are hens. No, everyone, everyone has this rooster energy. Um, the thing about roosters is because they are so 
so they make themselves vulnerable and they put themselves in dangerous positions. And that means that they are always very aware of how vulnerable they are. And they're always armoring up, right? That external appearance, dressing nicely and doing your hair, that's a type of armor. That's something that they're doing to protect themselves as well as to, uh, as well as like using it as a tool to do things, to get things done. Um, so roosters are always very aware of their own vulnerabilities and they're not going to show them to outsiders, but they are going to, they're going to feel more vulnerable, maybe in, in the same circumstances that someone else whose energy is represented by a predator and not by a prey animal would. And that means that they can feel that they're very vulnerable with the people who are closest to them. So with their friends and their family, they're going to, they're going to be more open and they're going to be more, they're, they're going to be more capable of being hurt. Um, and so if you, you know, if you say something to a close friend, excuse me, or to a family member who's a rooster, that they would completely brush off if someone shouted in the street or they heard it from their boss because it's coming from someone who's who's very close to them, it's gonna you know it's gonna hit them right in the soft underbelly, and they might take it a lot more seriously, or they might take it to heart in a way that they wouldn't when it was someone else. So that's something to be careful of, um, just when dealing with roosters in general. And when there's two roosters in a close space, because each person has this spirit of of like awareness of danger and knowledge that there's predators out there and having to keep the nest safe and having to protect the flock. Um, all of the external stressors might be a little harder to bear than they would for other people. And so it's really important that you make sure that you have enough food. You make sure that people don't get too hungry. You make sure that you're getting, you have a nice safe feeling place to sleep that the bedroom is a nice place, that you're really being able to rest, that you're not getting too hot or too cold. All of these external environmental features that speak directly to our monkey brain, to our hind brain, our lizard, you know, our, our, the, the, the part of our brain that is responsible for our physical survival. <clears throat> you know, there's a part of our brain that is always keeping track of how likely am I at any given moment to be eaten by something or to starve to death or to run out of fresh water or to freeze or, you know, this is something that we have because we are animals, because we live in bodies and not in computer screens. And the rooster's day-to-day -day attitude is maybe going to be more directly influenced by the little lizard in the back of the brain than some other people because they have this awareness of, of, the, of, of their vulnerability, of all of our vulnerability, and because they care so deeply about protecting the people who are closest to them. So probably if you were trying to map this on to like the big five personality traits, you'd say that roosters are naturally somewhat higher in trait neuroticism, um, which is a sensitivity to negative emotions um, that can be, you know, among other things, prompted by the immediate environment, whether that's the physical environment, whether it's emotional environment, things people are saying to them. So in short, <laughs> If I were a rooster living with another rooster in a small apartment or even a medium-sized apartment, but it's COVID and you can't necessarily go out as often and you're trying to build uh, a relationship where you're getting along as much as possible and not getting freaked out over misunderstandings and pecking at each other, um, I would really look to the creature comforts. I would look to uh, you know, making sure that no one gets hangry, making sure that everyone's getting enough sleep. Um, and then to keep in mind that roosters really care about boundaries, about um, how things are presented, how things are said, about the kind of uh, politeness and externals. And because both of you are roosters, so you're probably both, um, you know, you care naturally about the things that are important to the other person. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go extra out of your way to try and uh, try and like behave in a manner that a rooster will like because it could, should kind of come naturally to you. But especially if there's cultural differences or language differences when you're trying to get along with another rooster, really trying to be very clear and open about what you're saying, what you mean um, about your boundaries, about you know what things are important to you and what things you can let slide. 
I don't know what sort of misunderstanding is going on, but um, yeah, everything, everything to do with clarity and to do with boundaries is also something that's important to roosters. Um, at, it's at, at, at the deepest level. It's not one of the first things necessarily you see when you look at them, but it is, it's their, it's their, their deep energy. It kind of represents, um, oh, gosh, how I'm trying to think how to say this in English. It kind of represents how they do what they do, which is protect everyone. They protect everyone by building this boundary around them. So my flock lives inside our roost. And I've told all of the chicks that they have to eat, at, you know, in this area, because I've already patrolled it and made sure it's safe. So that whole setting boundaries around things and being very clear with their instructions or with their requests is, is one of the ways that they go about fulfilling their, their imperative in life, which is to protect and take care of others. Um, okay, I think that I don't want this to get too long. And um, I don't want people who I don't want the person who asked the second question to feel like she had to listen to way too much before she gets to her question. So I am going to end this now and I'm going to get back to you later this week, God willing, and if not next week, because I'm still still working on the scheduling a little bit I don't have a buffer built up yet, but I'm going to get back to you with the question about getting along with a rooster when you're a tiger, which is fun. I'm a tiger, so um, we'll see if I have any actual helpful insight or if it turns out I don't really know how to get along with roosters. In the meanwhile, take care of yourself, stay warm or stay cool, depending on where you are, stay safe, um, mask up. And <laughs> I really, really hope that we get through this quickly and have a much better year than the last two. Bye.